So first of all, I want to say hi and uh, special thanks to Mark and the Tomcat community for organizing it. And we are going to make a short walkthrough through Mosquito and monitoring of um, web applications uh, with a little focus on Tomcat and web applications in general. And if you have any questions, we will have a Q&A session at the end. But if you have questions in between, just post them in the chat or raise, raise hand or something. OK, so what are we going to do today is um, I will go through basic concept of Mosquito, because there are some things I have to mention before we can go into the live presentation. Then we'll go into a demo. It's a small application called Burger Shop. And um, I hope you all have lunch today because it's pretty, uh, pictures are very, you know, uh, not, not meant for hungry people. Then we'll go into Mosquito Inspect. This is one tool that allows us to deep analysis of what's happening in our code and uh, what is there. And then Mosquito Control, which provides a rather bigger picture. And then if the time, if time allows, we will go into the integration. So how do I put Mosquito into my application? So first of all, is the question, why do I need Mosquito at all? Uh, because running an application without monitoring is, uh, can be pretty, a pretty adventure. So Mosquito basically consists of four team members. There are producers, accumulators, thresholds, and journeys. And uh, I will give a short glance over it. It's about uh, three more slides, and then we go into live part. So first of all, uh, if you have an application, this little nice robot is your application, then Mosquito has a component called Core, which connects into your application and starts gathering data at different points. And every one of, every one of these points we call them producer because what they do is they produce data. They produce statistical data. So what can be a producer? A class can be a producer. Or maybe something like payment, gateway, mail service. Anything which does something of importance is a producer and which produce statistical data. So producers uh, can produce different types of data. And this is what we call stats. So for a class, every method would be a stat. For a payment service, uh, every payment method like credit card or direct debit would be a stat. For mail, so every mail type would be a different statistic. And uh, within the stats, we have different values. So for a class, um, method would be a stat and uh, the values we would uh, collect would be um, number of requests, uh, duration of requests, uh, number of concurrent requests, and all this kind of stuff, number of errors which are thrown in the class. For something like payment gateway, it could be the amount or number of payment attempts or payment errors. So one other thing which is, uh, which Mosquito concentrates on are intervals. Um, this is because if you are gathering data over a long period of time, uh, you are starting to accumulate huge amounts of data. And if you, for example, have an application which runs for days, and then something happens and uh, parts of the application become slower, uh, the average over the whole time wouldn't change. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that many applications behave very differently um, based on time of year, based on uh, time of the day. For example, in a dating application, you would usually have um, your peaks on Monday and Sunday evening. And for an e-commerce application, it would be lunchtime and uh, five or six o'clock before people go to go home. And this, it makes no sense to compare data, for example, for a dating application, to compare data from Monday to Saturday because they are completely different. They are completely different profiles. So that's why um, we are collecting data in intervals so we can look at the changes in a small amount of time. 
So now we have our robot and we have our uh, mosquito running in the robot and we are collecting the data, but we have to do something with the data. So this is what Mosquito Inspect, the tool I'm going to show you, uh, is for. It allows us to inspect the data and to uh, see what is happening within my application. So once I have this uh, and I have huge success, I will have more than one application, more than one instance. And um, I don't want to look into every instance of my application to determine if there are errors or something. I want to have a bigger picture. And this is another tool it's called Mosquito Control, which helps you to scale up and to get a nice overview. <laughs> Typically, it would be a TV screen into a development room where you can have uh, all your application, all, the, all your instances at once. So now it's demo time, and as far as I understand, I have to switch. Uh, I have to switch to another screen. So let me just check this. So um, I hope everyone sees my browser now, and. We go directly into the burger shop. So the burger shop is a um, demo application which is hosted on GitHub, so everyone can take a look at it. I will post a link uh, in one of the slides at the end of the uh, at the end of the presentation. So it basically has only two screens. You can select a burger, you can select a meal, you can select a type of meat on your burger, and then you can select a topping. So, for example, I'm taking. Uh, Tasty dog cockroach burger, and I can order it. So that's it. Uh, now my application is um, connected to Mosquito, and I'm gathering the data. And this is Mosquito Inspect, how it looks like for my application. So we start with producers. Uh, short question is the size of the font okay? Everyone can see it. Okay, I don't see anyone saying no. So, so this is uh, so this, those are the producers and different data points, different collections of data in my application. So part of it is standard. It comes with the JVM. So for example, I see my memory usage and I can see what's happening with my garbage collector. I can click into it and I see how many garbage collections I've had for different garbage collector types, and Mosquito detects automatically different garbage collector running in my application. One other uh, important thing are threads. So I can see uh, the type of threads and how many of the threads I have now. For example, I have now 11 runnable threads, which is great, they're ready to serve. And I don't have any block threads, which also great because block threads usually mean a problem in my application. But there are also custom data. So my um, application is a Spring application. It has some controllers and it has a service. And uh, this is a service I'm going to show you where all the magic happening and. Uh, let me switch shortly to, um, to the code. Oh. So this is my service, it's pretty straightforward has two methods, one for shoppable available, shoppable items, and one method to place the order. And everything I need to do in my application to make it monitorable is to add this annotation. So by adding this annotation, I'm telling Mosquito that it has to monitor every call that calls that uh, goes to the server, uh, to the service. There are different ways of integrating. This one is AP-based, um, we can, go through other ways uh, later. We can also integrate without having to annotate stuff, but um, 
My personal preference is to annotate explicitly because then you are in control of what's happening. So this uh, service has implementations of methods. So one is this get shortable items, which returns pre-configured list of items. And another one uh, is called whenever an order is placed. So switching back. So now you see um, the different methods in my service that I just showed you, and the amount of requests. So here I see amount of requests to every method, the time which was taken in the method, amount of current requests, maximal concurrent requests, min, max, average duration, number of errors, and last duration time. And also an error rate. So for this service, I don't have any errors, which is fortunate. Um, also, if I have any configured charts for this producer, I will see them just below the data. And uh, I can use not only numbers, but also charts to present. So we see that the service is pretty uh, fast. This is because we are measuring, uh, we are showing, uh, we are watching milliseconds now. Uh, but Mosquito measures in uh, nanoseconds if the JVM provides, so we can switch to microseconds here. And we see that the duration time is a little bit um, larger. So my place order method has 27 uh, microseconds. Of course, in the real world with databases and uh, all this stuff, um, we can, uh, we will have uh, larger numbers. But this is uh, in memory only application, so it's pretty fast. So one other thing which was, I was talking uh, previously about are uh, intervals. So here we see the um, amount of requests in the start, which was yesterday, I restarted. This is a demo server, so maybe someone else is on it right now. It's publicly available. But I can, of course, see what's happening right now. So last minute. So now I switch to one minute, and I see so in last minute we have uh, six requests to this method, and two and two to this method, and it makes a uh, cumulated amount of 10. I can also uh, see how the distribution is between different methods and see which methods consume most time and all of this stuff. Once I've done this uh, and I have my numbers, I can uh, start analyzing the data with uh, charts. We call the charts accumulators because they accumulate data over time. So you don't see only the last uh, execution, last snapshot of data, but how this was um, evolved over the time. So for my service, I've pre-configured um, my um, data and I place and accumulate on place order. So I see how many orders, how many requests to the method place order have been executed per minute. And here I can see my history and I see that there were some uh, 31 orders at uh, about half an hour ago. And um, the development, we have, uh, small script which is making orders uh, every minute or so, so this is where the data comes from. So now in real world we will have some limits like databases and resources. Uh, since this is a demo application, uh, since this is a demo application, uh, we have um, uh, said we have limit of, uh, you know, this is a kitchen, it's a burger shop, so we can serve so many burgers. So in my case, I say I can serve 10 burgers uh, without any effort. And if it's more, then it's getting uh, problematic. And with 50 burgers, I have to close my uh, shop because I'm running out of resources. So what I do, I am configuring a threshold. And I say, Everything below 10 is great, and above um, 10, it's getting yellow, and 50 is limit. So now let me make some orders. 
So I will just hit the refresh button a couple of times. Okay, uh, so I made some orders, but as you see here, as I told you previously, we are measuring data uh, in intervals. So current interval is uh, 30 seconds old. I have to wait another 30 seconds to see uh, the results of my uh, clicks. Also, what I see here is history. So whenever I have a change in my um, thresholds, I can trigger an alert, and this can be an email, SMS, some, or it can be something custom, you can extend it, and you can send uh, this to your ops on call, or ops genie, or whatever is your notification system. So now I see it turn red, and uh, because I, we had 31 orders, and you also see that the background of the menu is red. So this is the main information parts, and now with this I can set up a dashboard, and I've set up a burger board where I see amount of burgers, amount of orders, which I currently have, and I see some stuff I consider reported, like use memory, running threads, and amount of current sessions. And uh, also what I see here is the um, development of my uh, orders over time. So I see that I had one peak here, which was about the red threshold, and now I had another one. And uh, I can configure this with different charts. For example, for, I have configured threads because it's always important, not the uh, block thread, so I can see this. And also I see amount of requests. Uh, per minute, and the time spent in my requests, and the average request duration, and also session count, and the CPU time from my machine. So this is my personal uh, dashboard, but of course you can set up for whatever dashboard you want. Uh, Mosquito comes with a predefined set of thresholds, a predefined set of dashboards, but uh, you can configure your own. So now uh, we see uh, another interval has passed, and um, the amount of burgers is uh, back to normal, to seven. And I also see it here. And this is why the threshold went green again. And the site is green, everything great. So now, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, we have um, not only uh, data from annotated classes and not only data from the JVM itself, like garbage collector, thread, and memory, but basically uh, Mosquito can uh, list all ambients which are present in your application, which can be uh, some ambits which is coming from a third party library, like in this case uh, Tomcat or uh, even from your code or Mosquito itself. So Mosquito itself also provides all the information in ambience, and if you have another tool which can collect data from ambience, you can collect it from there. So now we are running in Tomcat and Mosquito knows it. And when we are running in Tomcat, uh, we automatically detect that we have a global request processor in Tomcat. And uh, this allows us to see what is happening with our connectors, for example. So I see amount of data sent over the connector and uh, number of errors. Okay, great, no errors. And the request count on the connector itself. So you can monitor your Tomcat connectors out of the box. Now, another uh, important feature of Mosquito are journeys. Journeys. Um, uh, basically, what's happening with your code if a user is using it. So now I'm starting a new journey, I'm calling it webinar. There are different ways to start a journey, but for demonstration purposes, I just start one from the browser. It opens a new browser window for me. And let me make another offer. And now I have a new journey here, and if I click on it, 
I see what calls have been executed by this browser in the journey. And if I click on that, I can see uh, what was happening in my code. So I see that first an order controller was called, which is a screen component, and this is called my shop service place order method. And it has called internally methods find item by name with parameter brioche and lamp, and it returned this return values. So it needed to do this for price calculation. And I see that the shop service place order method returned this burger with a price of 23.54 euros. Now, this. Uh, was uh, me instantiating the journey explicitly. But uh, of course, from time to time, you don't have the control of a customer's browser, so you cannot tell the browser uh, customer to um, start it automatically. Uh, but uh, what you can do, you can maybe add a flag in the database or something and have some code which initiates the journey. Another possibility is if you go to the producer, and the producer is a code producer like this, uh, like our shop service, we can uh, have a tracer. So I'm configuring, or oh, I'm switching on a new tracer, and a tracer is, uh, a tracer will automatically detect all calls to the service and record them. So I started this tracer, and I'm switching to another window. I have another browser here. So this browser, it's just another browser for say, this, uh, uh example, and I am executing another order. And keep, uh, and take a look at this number. This is a custom ID which is generated automatically by the demo application. In real world, it could be the custom ID in the database. And um, now I'm switching back. It's pretty, uh, I I'm not so used to having switched my screens per application. I usually have screen share for the whole uh, monitor. So now I go to my shop service. So my traces, and I see all calls to my uh, shop service. I see there have been plenty, and I have found one. I think this was mine. Not sure. And I see. So what was happening uh, when someone called my application? And I see also which customer was it. So I have added a tag with the customer ID. And now, if I have problems with specific user, I could take this request and I could see what's happening in my um, request, what's happening in my code when a specific customer calls it and why it's, for example, so slow. So we have had cases where the application is pretty slow and no one knows why. And like, you know, in spikes once in a day or twice a day, you have small executions. So you can switch a tracer and uh, wait for it and collect the data. And then in the end, you will be able to see um, what caused it. And the um, tracer will collect all the executions and you can provide a strategy for it. So in my case, we are safe to say, please keep only longest uh, slowest request. So now the, this is um, sorted by uh, execution duration, and you see the longest request is uh, kept, and the slowest request will fall out. So after some hours, I will have only my slowest request in my traces. Yes, this is uh, basically about um, Mosquito Inspect, quick overview. I, so I wanted to keep it short to have um, to allow you some questions. Uh, so you want to have, do you have some questions now or do you want me to go over to Mosquito Control quickly and then we ha can have the question session. And by the way, what is a COTS system? Yes, 
Christoph. This is designed to use on production server. And um, <laughs> this is designed to be used on production server. Question about performance. Well, usually you have a very little performance impact per monitoring station, so per annotated class. It's, it is very hard to uh, give you concrete numbers because it depends on the GVM version, it depends on the CPU, amount of CPU in the system and all of this. But uh, usually it's about a microsecond, two microseconds per call. So if you have a large application, you will have a lot of producers, but you will have a large heap anyway, and you will have long execution times. So let's say it's not, I haven't had uh, a case in past 10 years where uh, mosquito performance itself was a problem because as you see, if we're talking about web application, where execution derived, where the um, execution is um, in milliseconds, so adding a couple of microseconds to my 10, 20 millisecond execution is not a problem. Yes, Chris, I have uh, examples later, success stories, and I can show them. Um, okay, so, as I said before, I'm making this, I'm very successful with my burger shop, and I'm thinking about making the franchise model, and uh, I opened two more. So previously we were looking at one instance at one concrete uh, burger shop. Uh, it was called Hamburg, and now I opened another one in Munich and a third one at the Betcon conference, which is taking place in September in uh, Berlin. So if anyone from you is from Berlin, then I uh, strongly suggest you go there because it's best conference for um, value for Java. And now. I've configured mosquito control to uh, be able to monitor the, all of my shops at once. So this is a screen where I see what's happening over my different application. I see the orders from different franchises or from different JVMs. I see my sessions. I also see the uh, average well execution, CPU usage, and so on. I can also click here and see what's happening there and uh, why is it, for example, went yellow right now, and I also can look at, into accumulators and all this stuff. Um, and uh, especially for uh, op, uh, for, uh, for op usage, we have a TV mode, where you can see what's happening um, on your, in your application cluster at once, and as long as the smiley is green, everything is great, and if it changes the color to be yellow or red, so you can start looking. Now, uh, commercial of the shelf, yes, it can be retrofitted into commercial of the shelf, uh, but uh, funny thing is, it's uh, probably as capable as uh, commercial tools, and right now, it's, and it's free and open source, so everyone can use it without having to pay for it. Okay, so um, if you have questions now, I would take them. Otherwise, I would go into the um, integration part and also to success stories and show uh, real-life examples of how mosquitoes solve problems. Okay. Oh, I... Oh, the question about session. Okay. So, um, it's an interesting question, actually. So the journey, uh, Mosquito keeps a journey in its own um, storage, and uh, it um, the only uh, link to the Tomcat session is that the journey ID is associated with the session. But you can uh, associate the journey ID 
with something else. So for example, if we are talking about REST APIs, you don't have a session there. We usually will provide a special header um, which identifies a session so you can um, have a link between different calls. So um, I think uh, the session fixation mitigation should work, but I would have to look deeply into it and we can uh, do it together after the presentation. I hope this was answer enough. Okay, so short recap, what have we seen so far? Um, we've seen um, basic integration, so how code relates to what you see in Mosquito, what kind of different data is analyzed by Mosquito, what are the different um, types of data which we can uh, collect, and uh, also uh, how we can make charts out of it, how we can connect it, and, uh, configure thresholds, and uh, set up dashboards. But one thing I maybe forgot to mention or haven't uh, mentioned explicitly enough is that uh, from my point of view what Mosquito is a unique at is to combine um, development operations and business concerns in one tool and this is because we don't only we not only monitor technical data like databases CPU and execution time but we also can monitor uh, data which is pure business data and I can show you shortly so I'm sorry uh, my PowerPoint took control of my screen so what I mean is besides the technical data I can also monitor uh, non-technical data like ingredients so here I configured a um, producer which collects uh, performance data on the, what ingredients have been used on the, um, in the burger. So I see how many dog lamps and mushrooms I sold last minute. And this allows me to monitor non-technical data in the same tool as technical data and the non-technical data could be stuff like payments, registrations and whatever. So talking about a real world example, uh, I have worked for Transcloud, which is um, uh, a Germany's uh, dating platform. I mean it's still there but it's not that huge anymore. And uh, we had a problem that we didn't know how much traffic is coming from registered users and how much traffic is coming from non-registered users. And uh, marketing wanted to make split, to have two applications, one application for registered and one application for non-registered users. And the cluster at that time was 12 GVM. So naturally we thought, okay, we need to have now 24, 12 for the non-registered and 12 for registered. So what we did, we uh, made Mosquito producer which separated between traffic between calls coming from registered and non-registered users and it showed that non-registered users produced like three percent of the load so we went live with two servers and not 12 and it worked pretty well so okay so back to uh, the big picture, we have uh, shown, uh, we have seen the application, the agent which is integrated in the application which is called Mosquito Core and the Mosquito Control which connects to all the applications and there's also another tool which is called Mosquito Central which is a storage service where you can store all this data and connect it to another application so you connected to uh, different instances of your application 
and they are sending all the monitoring data to it and it can store it into a database like Postgres, MySQL, or MongoDB, Elasticsearch, whatever, even Excel. And also it's uh, extendable so you can provide a three-liner which will store it into your storage. Okay, so this is... Uh, this would be the presentation part, but I skip it because we wanted to go into the integration. And now uh, for the integration part. So we've seen uh, integration based on AUP, but it's also uh, possible to have different integrations. So one is CDI, which works, um, which looks like AUP, it's same annotations but uh, it is a different method because CDI works differently from AP. It's not um, compiled code, but it's decorators and so on. You can also have an integrations with Spring AP. You can have Java proxies, and there's some web integration. And also there's a Java agent which allows you to integrate an application uh, where you don't have access to source code. So for the AP, you just have to annotate your class or you can annotate just one method. And you can also annotate another method um, that you don't want to monitor. For example, if you have a method which is called uh, millions of times in a loop, so you don't want to monitor it because it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, Yes, the agent could be used with the CEOTS, but I don't quite understand what is the reason for this question. Maybe you can elaborate it a little bit. Do you, do you have a commercial tool which you want to, where you want to use Mosquito? Then yes, it can be uh, integrated into it. Um, so another, <laughs> so another, um, way of integration is a count annotation. Count is similar to monitor, but monitor is meant for classes which do something. And with count, you can just count stuff. So you annotate a class with count, and then every method becomes a set, and the class itself becomes a producer, and then you just have to call this method without any uh, actual implementation, and it will be counted. So for example, if you have payment count, and you want to count different types of payment, then uh, you just have three methods and that's it. And for integration into your project, if you have Maven, I know Mark hates Maven, but most people do use Maven, but it's also possible with end. So for Maven, you just have to add the dependencies and add a build plugin, the SPJ Maven plugin, and it will process your data. So for CDI, it's uh, pretty similar, really. Uh, same annotations, just what happens is a little bit different inside. And then you have to add uh, mosquito interceptors to your uh, context. Then another way uh, is uh, Java proxies. This is where you can uh, do it manually. So you have, if you have an implementation of a service and you call a method which creates a proxy, for this service, and then it will be monitored. And this allows you actually to have multiple producers for one implementation, uh, which is very useful if you want to track traffic from different um, clients, from different clients within your code. So then for web, so we've seen that we can see the amount of requests and uh, different type of requests and what has been called. And you can add uh, some uh, filters which are bundled with Mosquito. And if you have service 3.0, which is Tomcat 7, 8, and so on, uh, then uh, it will be added automatically with uh, the uh, manifest which is contained in the JAS. So um, to add the Mosquito Inspect tool, you can, uh, you just have to add this dependency and then um, the core which is running within your application uh, will open a port and Mosquito Inspect can connect to this port and you can see all the data. 
So I will skip this one because we already uh, handled the central shortly. What we also have is uh, iPhone app, which is also free. Uh, so you can um, have an, uh, all this, all the data and charts from your application on the go. And the Mosquito Control also offered also offers um, iPhone uh, app, where you can see what's happening across your um, across your different instances, and um, the links to the apps are in the presentation, but I think we will add them to the video later. Okay, so you asked for success stories. Now there is one. Um, and it happened a while ago, also at Transcode, and we had a release and everyone was happy, and then after the release, like a couple of hours, uh, database administrators <laughs> runs in and says, we have a huge problem because the database traffic increased and we will not survive the evening. And uh, then we uh, analyzed it with Mosquito and uh, we used um, a proxy style on this um, particular application. And we've seen that 55% of calls came from one component run, client and code. And this allowed us to look into this code, and we've seen that there was a bug in the code. And within 30 minutes, we've been able to find in our code base of 200,000 lines of code or something, what was the um, problem and how, can, how could we solve it. So another thing uh, happened uh, with another customer of ours. And they had a problem that the application overall performance was slow and uh, some pages took forever to load. And um, we made journeys and for all important calls and then analyzed the call trees. And then we've seen that there were redundant calls to the backend. So as you see here, uh, Circle threads are three calls, same calls within one uh, execution, which every one of them takes 600 uh, milliseconds. And by simply, uh, and by simply uh, removing uh, the second and third calls and caching the result in uh, the first, after the first call, we were able to save one second of execution time. Another success story, uh, we had a bug which was only reproducible by one user. So there was an inbox, and it was another German dating provider. And in the inbox of this particular user on page two, he had an error. And the error was just an error message, nothing. And we had nothing in logs, and he was calling support every day. So with his permission, we recorded the session. and. Within this session, this is old screen, but um, you can, so it's, all, it's uh, before we redesign the interface. And you can see that um, the call was uh, returning null because uh, there was an exception in the end of the stack trace and a call for the user ID who was the sender of the message um, was returning an error because the user or was returning null because the user has been somehow deleted from the database. And then we could uh, remove this particular message from this mailbox and then we could um, fix this problem for this particular user. So this is for success stories. Now I am open for your questions. Or we can go into some more detailed features up to you. Yes, it would be possible to. Yes. So I need to ask uh, there are many ways. For this. So one is it, you don't want to change any source code or you don't want to change the package var. 
because uh, what you can do if you you can drop in mosquito into the code and uh, all the web style will be there so by request calls and so on or you could use the agent and then you will have everything but then you have to run your production application with mosquito agent which is okay i mean New Relic and Epidemics and all the commercials too do the same. Um, but uh, this is possible, yes. Oh yeah, this is actually uh, true, Patrick. Uh, but it's, I think I am wrong um, at the C of this question. So this is a question to my person. Uh, where does Mosquito run? Um, well, Mosquito Core runs in your application. So if you have an application, then this is runs within your application. But uh, the inspect and control, this is both just Java tools. i switch to my browser shortly. And uh, they are uh, Java web applications which runs with Tomcat and you can just drop it into any Tomcat. With Mosquito Inspect you have a possibility to run it as standalone. So you go to mosquito.org, download, and I download this uh, link and it has uh, ready to run Mosquito Inspect. So if you download it and start and uh, open it in your browser, you actually see the screen. Uh, but uh, you also can, and, and then you can connect to your application by using this quick connect, or you can even define some server. So your application will open a port, and you just add IP or host name and a port, and then it will connect it. If you have only one application, uh, you can embed Mosquito to run within your application. It's also possible. So it's a burger shop here. The inspect runs within the application. So this reduces some complexity. Was it answered to the question, Simon? Simon? Simon. Okay. Okay, so one thing I haven't showed so far, but I can now since I, we have some time. Um, I can also analyze my sessions. So this was the journeys which I was previously recording. And for example, this was a webinar journey. And uh, you know what, let me make some more orders in it. I, let me check if I'm still in the journey. Yeah, so I see my calls here. And now I can analyze uh, my journey. Uh, so this means that Mosquito goes through the different components in your journey and tells you how often which component has been called and how many time it has been spent within this component. And this helps you to understand what is taking away time in your application. If you have a distributed application, for example, so something which contains multiple nodes, uh, you can uh, then see also network execution time and local execution time. And uh, then you can uh, say what's happening, what is eating away time in your application. And also for every call to the session, I see what's happening for this call, so how often which service have been called in this call. Okay, so I think, uh, this is about it for short introduction. And um, Jano, how do you customize the dashboard? Okay, great. So there are two different things. First of all, um, you can do it uh, by configuring it. 
So Mosquito has a configuration, JSON configuration. Uh, click, click, no. So this is my um, configuration of the current instance and it's a lot of JSON you can use to configure it. But um, the fastest thing is uh, we, get, we go get a new dashboard and say, the, we create chance dashboard. So it's now an empty dashboard. And then we go to the accumulators and say, oh, this thing, I think this is great. I don't, I want it to my, on my dashboard. And then I add it to the dashboard and then it's there. And then I go to my thresholds and say, oh yeah, this one. Um, oh no, this is only possible with config, sorry. So yeah, uh, I want to add it also. And uh, this way you go through different uh, producers and different uh, accumulators and thresholds and add uh, what you need to your application, to your dashboard. And then uh, you can open the config again. And then you see the configured um, dashboard and can save it for later for so you can have uh, it in your configuration repository and don't lose it if anything happens. Yes, uh, it can. Um, I mean, of course, they have to be all uh, mosquitoized, so it has mosquito agent, and then everything um, sends the data there, and you can store all the data in a database and have it uh, there and analyze it. Ah, okay, two questions in one. Um, yes, uh, so uh, Mosquito itself runs with the, so what we are seeing now is Live, it's data coming directly uh, from your application, from the JVM. And if you um, kill the application, the data in the application, in the JVM would be lost. And this is what uh, Central is for. So you can um, have this application, uh, have this data stored. And there's another plugin uh, so we have some plugins here, they're not configured here right now, but there are pl plugins which can be um, used to put the data from the storage to the data, uh, to the current data, and then you see it on the producer page. So if you go to the, um, for example, to the shop service, and you would have this data, so you would have the data from the storage uh, just below this chart from the current uh, JVM. Uh, then that is stored and builds up in repository. How do you purge the old data? Well, it depends. I mean, we don't. Uh, we don't purge the old data, and uh, you are free to have your own algorithm to do it because it's just stored in an application. Um, we are usually, if we do it, we use Mongo and Elasticsearch. And um, you can use whatever you want, and then you can have uh, any uh, strategies to purge it. So. No, it's not like log files. Also, you can uh, store the data in the log files if you want. As I said, we have um, central uh, storage which saves data in CC files, which allows it to send you directly to marketing for analysis in Excel or something like this. But it's not used quite often, obviously. Uh, 
Uh, it's not okay. Can the data be exported? Yes. I mean, uh, first of all, we have the, um, um, the API. So what Mosquito, when Mosquito inspect connects to a core, then uh, there is an API and you can use this API as well. It's public. But this would be Java core. Another thing is you can, so you can configure your own listener and then whenever time passes for one, for example, this one minute interval is finished, your listener will be called and will be given a snapshot of data. And this data is a JSON file, it's actually a Java object. And uh, you can store it whenever you want. And um, actually, Mosquito itself also has an export. And you can just export it directly in XML from the from the interface. It now has an empty line before the XML markups. This is why the browser complains here. So from that, uh, if as there was no matter what business. They have to expose of for different players to six notification. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this depends on how you configure your notifications. So, what we do is we can trigger different notifications um, based on thresholds. What we don't do is we do not provide a very sophisticated notification patterns because there are a lot of tools out of the market which do exactly this. And we have integrations with Slack, for example, and with uh, Mattermost and with OpsGenie. So, for example, you could configure that all your notifications go into OpsGenie and, or, for example, into if this and that. I think this is an A. And then from there, you can configure your rules. So Mosquito itself doesn't provide yet a sophisticated way to configure different notifications because it's a little bit out of scope and we will be, um, yeah, we would be um, competing with people who are, you know, doing this stuff forever. I hope this was answer enough. So, is there no more questions? I mean, it's uh, one hour. I'm always open for more. So, if there's interest, we can set up another one with like hands on integration into your application, for example. So, if anyone says, hey, great, but can you help me to make uh, how we call it mosquitoization? So just uh, give us a shot and we can make it, you know, next event, uh, bringing Mosquito into your application and making it monitorable. But other than that, uh, I would say this is it for today, if there are no more questions. And then I would like to thank you for all your time. And uh, once again, thanks to Tomcat community for having us. <laughs>